We get asked for plum wine all the time. So we bought some stuff and we're gonna make plum wine. This is Nature Blessed Plum Wine Concentrate. We got it from Amazon. We'll have links in the description so you can get your own. Uh, when you do get it, keep it in the fridge. Uh, they say to freeze it if you're not gonna use it right away. Um, it doesn't come refrigerated, which I think is odd, but okay. Uh, it comes from a frozen foods company. Uh, anyway, so this is going to be a math heavy episode. <laughs> Because here is a little conundrum for you. When I look at the description, it says 65 bricks in here, which equates to 1.3227 original gravity. Not 1.03, 1.3, as in like off the charts, way silly high. They also claim, let me pull it up here, that if you do a 4.67 to one dilution of this, you get one and a quarter gallons at 14.3 bricks, which comes to like 1.058 gravity. However, let me show you a little bit of basic math where I think they might have their numbers slightly not completely explained properly. Bear with me. It says there are 32 servings in the container. There's 32 ounces in this container, so the serving size is one ounce. So 32. Each one has 20 grams of sugars times 20 grams of sugars. That gives me 640 grams of sugars in the entire container. Divided by 454 grams gives me 1.409 pounds of sugar. Okay, so if I multiply that, that out using the 0 0.046 of gravity per pound of sugar in a gallon of must, I get 1.0648, 1.065 original gravity without diluting. Something's not making sense here. That is suspiciously close to their diluted number though, making me think they are actually kind of getting the diluted and concentrated mixed up in their labeling. And that's okay. I can forgive that. I wish they were a little bit more clear, but this came up in our VIP recently. Uh, somebody was asking about it and they were worried that this is so thick that they weren't getting a good reading, but they were getting a very high reading and they weren't sure. So I said, well, I don't, if you're diluting it at all, I can't see it being too thick to worry about. So you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna fly by the seat of our pants, pour some of this stuff into a fermenter and we're gonna take some readings. <laughs> So that's the only way you're gonna know. If we don't take a reading, we will never know if this is truly what they're claiming or, you know, whatever. Because here's the thing, the sugars can't lie. If there's only so much sugar in there, it can't be that high. So are you taking a reading of this full strength? Uh, no. Okay. I suppose I could. Should I? Yeah, why not? I don't think I can. I think it's too thick. Okay. Yeah, it's too thick. So okay. what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour it all in. We're gonna start adding a little bit of water to dilute this. And then we'll take samples as we go to get to the gravity that we want, which is somewhere around a 1.100 or so. Actually, we can go a little bit lower because of something else in a minute. Yeah, that's a little thick. I don't think you'll get an, a, an appropriate gravity reading with a hydrometer using this stuff. Straight. Now diluted is another story, which makes me think they're not wrong about what they're saying, but I'm wondering if they mean one ounce diluted out 4.8 times. So you're really mixing one ounce of the concentrate with four ounces or so of water, but then wouldn't that be a five ounce serving size? I, and that's where it gets a little bit confusing. So I just want to clear all that up. By making it even more confusing. Do a whole bunch of math. <laughs> So we have 96 fluid ounces measured out over here already. So that way, even though we are just kind of throwing water in there, we'll be able to know how much we actually used. So we will end up with a full gallon if we use up all the water. Yeah. Which means we should end up with a higher gravity than their single mixed value, which is really low. 1.058 is a very low number to start for a wine. So I'm gonna give you something like 8%, 8.7%, something like that, which is totally acceptable if that's what you want. Um, for us, we like our wines to be a little higher, mostly for preservation purposes. And I just threw some water in there to get the rest of the juices out. Yeah, more water. Pardon me while I swish this out. <laughs> Said that all wrong, it's excuse me, not pardon me. Oh. It just kind of came out halfway as I was doing it. And I was like, oh yeah, that. You know, sorry. 
So I'm going to put more water in here and then we're going to take a measurement in a second. Just trying to rinse off the funnel. That's like half the water so far. Stick that in there. And I'm just going to give this a swirl. This doesn't seem like the bejesus has to get mixed out of it. It looks like it mixes up pretty well. It's a concentrate, so it kind of wants water. That's my theory. The water was removed, it wants it back. Makes sense if you think about it. <laughs> okay. Handy dandy hydrometer. There's just enough in there to be able to take a sample. That is using, oh wow, look at that. She had 96 ounces of water in there. I poured it by eye. There's 48 ounces left. That's half of 96. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he is that annoying. <laughs> All the time. Okay, so right now it's at 1.140. So there's something funky with the way they wrote how much sugar's in there. I believe those numbers are their diluted numbers. There's no way that's concentrated because there's just not enough sugar in there. There's only a, like a 1.4 1 pounds of sugar in the whole thing that way. But there isn't. There's a lot more sugar in there because to get a 1.140 at half a gallon is like three pounds of sugar. It's just, it, it, I, I'm probably wrong on that. Don't, don't quote me, please don't. But anyway, so I know already though that we want more water in this because it's a little high. 1.140 is not what we want it to be. Are you going to put the full... I don't know. This is an experiment in math and math less, okay? I used the math to see that something wasn't right, but we can actually go math less and get it to where we kind of want. So I'm just going to add enough water until it drops it down to one point... You know what? Let's go to 1.090. Give a nice target gravity. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why didn't you just let it go at 1.140? You make more alcohol. Well, yes and no. 1.140 is a little bit on the high side. A lot of yeast might struggle with that and it could stall. So I'd rather err on the side of caution and make sure that it's going to finish fermentation. Give it a good swirl. It's a lovely, rich, dark oh, color. Oh yeah. And the thing is, these juices are actually really high quality. We've used them before. They're great. Our Merlot is the same brand. And I didn't pay too much attention to the numbers there. I think I just mixed it all up and it worked. So I didn't question it. But when it came up in our VIP, I was like, that doesn't make sense. If I follow the numbers on the bottle and mix it to the specifications they're calling for, there's no way. And I forgot the hydrometer. <laughs> I was like, wow, it's not flow. Yep. That works so much better with a hydrometer in it. So right now we are at 1.110, all right? So we're getting there, we're close. This is actually a viable way to do this, by the way. Um, some people don't like to do too much math. They don't wanna to have to figure things out. Okay, you started with a very concentrated thing. Keep adding a little bit of water at a time till you get it where you want it to be. Conversely, if you started with just plain water, add sugar and mix it up until you get it to where you want it to be. It all works. So I just have 20 more points to go. I'm gonna guess how much water I need. That's probably about right. But it's not all of it, so maybe. We'll see. Keep in mind, I'm ignoring their dilution rate. Their dilution rate was like 4.7 or something, so we should have one and a quarter gallons. I'm ignoring that. I want the gravity I want, because it's my wine, I'm making it my way. Now we're at 1.100, so we're a lot closer. So I need to add just as much water as I just added the last time again. By the way, I don't have a problem pouring everything back in because all this gear, everything was sanitized in. <laughs> the one handed. That's right, threw her off guard. See, it's using up almost all that water, which is really interesting to me. When using a glass hydrometer and a glass cylinder, always like make Be sure gentle. it doesn't bounce in there. I don't call them hydrometers for nothing. 
Oh, I did not shake that up. See, got to be aware of a lot of things when you're brewing. <laughs> if I didn't shake that up, I could have taken, taken a reading and it was all wrong and I'd wonder why. That is looking like 1.090. Okay, so we nailed our target original gravity. How do I come up with the target original gravity? Let me explain that. All right, let's also figure out how much water we used. We started at 96 and we, we have 14 are... left. Uh, 80, we used 82 ounces of water. 82 ounces. We didn't actually measure the uh, concentrate though. I don't know if there's exactly 32 ounces. I'm gonna trust them. Aerating. <laughs> okay, uh, I need the funnel one more time because I. I forgot to do something before I took my final read, my original reading. Oh yeah, it's, it's a little bit of dilution there. I do have about one ounce of water here, so this will change the gravity ever so slightly. We are gonna take another reading. Um, but this is Fermade O, it's our yeast nutrient, and I like to add it to everything. This is about two and a half grams in one ounce of water. It's a, a nice way to add a little bit of extra insurance, give those yeast a little bit more to work with, because you know, man, me, the. Because, you know, yeast does not live by sugar alone. So, now I'm done with that. When sanitizing, don't fear the foam. When packaging up a fermentation, <laughs> foam is not your friend. I'm not saying fear it. Just be, be aware of it. Be aware. Keep it down. Push the foam down. Keep it away. It probably didn't change it much. We're doing this just for accuracy's sake. Okay, so apparently the foam was blocking my vision before. It's 1.092. Somehow it went up. It didn't go up. I just couldn't see it. You see how easy it is to be inaccurate? Yeah. That's why we don't really worry about a point or two. Yeah, it's all approximation. All right. But what I want to do is get off the calculator the teacher said I would never have handy and get an approximate potential ABV. Okay, so we started with 1.092. If it went to drier, 1.000 which it could go lower, but let's just call it that. That gives us 92 points of gravity used times 135, gives us 12.4% ABV. Pretty respectable, pretty normal for a wine. Now that's assuming it went dry. That means we can sweeten to taste. Now, you may have noticed, we didn't put anything else in this. You know why? We have never used this juice before. We don't know what its flavor characteristics are when it's fermented. We don't know what this wine's gonna taste like. So why would I wanna add alterations now when I have no idea what we're working with? That comes later. But for now, there's one more thing to do. And what is that one thing? Now one thing is to add our yeast. Our yeast of choice today is Premier Cote de Bloc. And the reason being is that it was listed as one of the better yeast choices for fermenting plum. And as we're fermenting plum juice, it would lead us to believe that that was the right choice. Also, this has a yeast tolerance of 12 to 14%. And based on Brian's math, we are in that range. 12.4. So it should go dry, it might go just short of dry, which is totally fine. We're probably going to back sweeten this anyway, because plum wine is usually pretty sweet, like really sweet, which is probably why I like it. But anyway, um, now the yeast. We are going to use a whole packet. Why are we using a whole packet? We're using a whole packet because the dry yeast has a random ratio that we don't know of viable, meaning live yeast, and dead yeast. Now, both are equally important in a fermentation process, but if you use a partial packet, you don't know what type of ratio you have are versus live versus dead. So using the whole packet, we're guaranteed that we at least have enough live yeast. At least four or five of them can get together, do the happy dance of love, and, and build a colony. And build a colony. Which is really not the way they work at all, but it's funnier when you say it that way. <laughs> now, do you need to use a full packet, full packet in a one gallon fermentation? No, absolutely not. A full packet is designed for up to five gallons. We used to use half a packet for up to three gallons and then a full packet for five gallons. That's still a viable way to go. Mm -hmm. um, I just started using whole packets and we noticed it worked better. Okay, but if you want to save a couple bucks, use a half packet. Probably not a problem. At this point, we just need a bung and an airlock. 
That would be you. That would be me. Okay. We have plum wine, just like that. It's automatically wine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it's now called a must, okay? Um, it's a wine must. So this is going to go sit in our fermentation station for probably about two weeks. Um, and once the airlock activity starts to slow down a lot, by the way, when fermentation starts up, that airlock is going to start bubbling like crazy, okay? it You really do want one. Don't just put a lid on there or anything like that. Don't use balloons, please. Yeah. We're actually not going to put this in the fermentation station right away. We're going to put this oh, on yeah. a tray with edges because... Like a cookie sheet with edges? We've never fermented with this before, so we don't know how active this may get. So this, I have a feeling it's going to be very This may active. fill up with foam and explode out like a volcano. If so, that was to happen, we'd use what's called a blow-off tube. We have a video on that too. But if I have it sitting in a tray with edges, then all that overflow is going to be caught by my tray and not all over my kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Good times when it's not all over the kitchen. Anyway, so this is going to go ferment. See you at the next step in about two seconds. Okay, so this is like seven days old. <laughs> the airlock ceased activity, which means this is now Schrodinger's mead. Is it done? Is it stalled? We don't know. We don't know yet, but we're about to find out. It started at 1.092, which is pretty much in the uh, realm of perfection for the range that we like to be, meaning it's not so high that it could stress yeast and cause weird flavors or stalls, hopefully, but it's also not low, so it still produces a decent amount of alcohol, something in the 12% or so range. Quite gassy. It has been swirled a time or two. Beautiful color. Yeah. I am expecting that this fermented out fully. So just whoop, maybe a little bit more so I can actually read the hydrometer. I think we have a bad batch of yeast because this is another stall. This is at 1.030. Okay. We've been seeing quite a few stalls recently and it's starting to really trouble me. We did have someone suggest we're not using enough yeast nutrients and I'm going to start using more, but in this case, we're just going to add some yeast hulls, give it a good shake and see if it'll start up all on its own. All right. So what I mean by that is we're going to use yeast hulls, which are literally just dead yeast. And I'm going to put in a teaspoon of that right in here. It's funny. I was looking at the half teaspoon measure because I grabbed it first thinking, oh, I got to use two of those, but it actually fits inside. So I can do that and shake it up and make noises. Hey. And then do that. In do place. not do that. <laughs> when he was doing that, I'm like, oh, that's uh, okay. Oh my God. It's like bad idea. It's like bad feet right up your nose. It's the powder. Ugh. It's, but if you've ever smelled yeast holes, it's not the most pleasant smell. It literally is like bad feet, <laughs> dirty socks, you know, <laughs> nasty feet kind of thing. It's just, it, it's not good. <laughs> you don't want that up your nose. You, you, you okay? Bro you broke me. <laughs> Derek is now broken. And what I want to do now is I want to give this a good mix. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to get that on my nose first. Every time I take a breath, it's like, oh, God, what died? <laughs> I'm glad you think this is so funny. Okay. I put the airlock back on so I can mix this up. That is the second part to our how to fix a stall is to... Give it a good mix. See all the gas that's coming out? That's important. You want to degas, but we also want to get everything on the bottom up into suspension. There's still a lot of live yeast in this, so we want to get that going. You still laughing? I'm trying not to. <laughs> I'm trying not to breathe through my nose. <laughs> Wish I could share this experience with you. I really do. Oh, my cheeks hurt. <laughs> So you see how much gas is still coming out of there. That's the idea. You want to degas this, get it shaken up really, really good. I'm going to continue doing this off camera because it's kind of boring to just watch me continue shaking something. And then we'll put it back in the fermentation station for probably a week or two. And we'll be back to show you what it does. I don't know what's going on. Hold on. <laughs> we took a reading. <laughs> we started this two weeks ago. A week ago, we took a reading because it looked like it might have been done. But it wasn't done because it was a 1.030. So hopefully it's not done. I think at that time I saw the telltale signs of little, little tiny bubbles coming up the side. I do not see tiny those bubbles. any longer. So... So something has changed. Yeah, that's clearing. Beautiful color. So it did nothing. 1.030. Is that bad? Not necessarily. Does it mean it stalled? Oh, yeah, it totally stalled. 
but not always is a stall a bad thing. Let me explain. We tend to try to get things to go dry, and then we back sweeten to taste. Well, plum wine is sweet by nature, okay? 1.030 is not uh, too sweet for a plum wine. I think that's actually about right for a plum wine. So we may have inadvertently gotten it perfect on the first try. <laughs> you like that? That's my story. We accidentally succeeded. Yeah. <laughs> the smell is lovely. The only downside to this method is that it does reduce the amount of alcohol that's present, but I am not against that because I'll figure that out in a second. It smells pretty nice. Tastes very young. Ooh, that is, that is tart. Wow, that is not sweet. Yeah, the heck. That tastes super dry. Oh, it's just bizarre world. That ain't right. <laughs> it's a little fizzy. It does taste super dry. It, it, it tastes, tastes like completely it would... dry. It's very fruity, but it's that really... Mouth puckeringly dry, like... Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't hate it, though. I just want to say that. Right. It doesn't taste bad. <laughs> it doesn't it taste tastes like, dry. It tastes like plum wine at all, though. No. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pour the sample back in. We're going to rack this over to a new container. I, I have an idea, and I know it's, it's weird and a little counterintuitive, but I kind of want to go purchase some plum wine and take a gravity reading on that. Oh, we can do that. To see how much sweetness registers on the gravity Yeah, rate. they might be super high and we just don't know it. Like, see, the thing is everything's relative. Like we all think, oh, super high is like 1.030 to 1.050. Not necessarily, because if you think about it, like fruit juices are in the 1.05 range and not all of them taste really sweet. Yeah. A lot of like sodas and things like that are way higher than that, yet, People don't consider that. Well, some people do, like I do. People don't necessarily consider them to be sickly sweet. Like Mountain Dew, for example. I'm betting you that is that final gravity is higher than most of our starting gravities. I'm just saying right now, I bet you it is. I used to love that stuff, by the way, so I'm not really making fun of it, but I am. But wow, that stuff has a lot of sugar in it. Jolt Cola. How about that one? See, now... If I wasn't completely opposed to these things, I would say we that would be a fun video to do. Do they even make Jolt Cola anymore? I have no idea. I think we're going to do it. But we'd have to purchase some. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Okay. All right, that's coming. All right. Stay so tuned. Let's, let's take notes. Yeah. So today is 6, 14, 23, and it's at 1.030. But what I want to do is calculate how much alcohol did we make to see is this a viable wine as it is right now or... Do we need to do something to it to get it to go further? Um, so 1.092 is our original starting gravity. 1.092 minus 1.030 gives us 0 0.062 gravity used, or 62 points, the way I like to say it, times 135, gives me 8.37. It's eight, and it's like right on the edge of what I call a wine. But you know what? We don't have to make that choice today because this needs to get racked and sit for a little while and clear out while we go and get some plum wine and find out what it... So do you want to rack it today since it didn't do anything? I think we should rack it. It's, that's two readings at 1.030. All right. Um, so what vessel do you want to rack this into? Uh, I think a wide mouth one gallon would All be right. sufficient because we have a lot of space here. So using the wide mouth one gallon, which is a little bit smaller than this size gallon, we should have less head space and therefore less oxidation. Now we do have sediment in here, but it and only... Why am I doing announcer voice? I'm so sorry. It only comes to about here, which you may or may not be able to see. You probably can't because there's all kinds of stuff in the way. There! It's in there! Yeah, there's so, a little bit of sediment. So it's not that much. Um, but let me go get a wide mouth. Yeah. All right. So racking, we use an auto siphon and I'm leaving the cap on. This is not a, just a protective thing that you throw away. It's actually meant to be there to keep the end from going all the way into the lees. Yeah. Trust me, years ago I threw them away because I didn't know. So, see that? We all make mistakes and we all start somewhere. <laughs> kind of important to know. So what I want to do is just get this in about halfway like that and then get it started. 
Derica is holding that hose all the way to the bottom of the other fermenter, and the destination must be lower than the source, or else this just doesn't work. And now, let it go. Then, put my note back on. And what are we going to do with it now? We're going to let it sit. It's going to go back in the fermentation station to clear out a little bit more, settle, and we'll be back in probably another week to check on it and determine what to do next. Okay, so a week ago we racked this. It was at 1.030, which is a little bit of a stall. Not really the way I'd like it to be, but hey, you know, we're going to go from there and move forward. Because reasons. Yeah, because... We're probably going to sweeten it anyway. We might not have to now. Maybe it'll be done. But we are going to make sure that it's stable. So the first thing that we actually want to do is rack this into a pitcher. Get the rest of the sediment out that may have fallen out last time and uh, get it to a pitcher where we can get some measurements. I did take the cap off the bottom because I don't think there's much in the bottom, even though I can't see it. It is super dark, so we, we're we just guessing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so yeah, there's just a thin little film in the bottom. Um, we tried to get as much as we could out of there, no problem, because um, this will probably be pasteurized anyway, so there'll be some more fallout. Uh, it, it's all good. All right, it's racked. We have 110 ounces. We're just going to pour a small glass and give it a sample. So while we're doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about why we are making this particular beverage. Our main reason of why we're making this particularly gorgeous, thank you very much, beverage, Ooh. is because of my mother. She is actually really fond of plum wine. It's really like, oh, I'll totally make a plum wine. And we've actually tried to do, do this once before. Uh, I believe it was even it was before prune. we started stay studying. Because I couldn't find plum concentrate. And it I was prune. No, it was just vile don't do that. is the word that I use. Don't do that. Vile. Don't do that. One of the three brews that I dumped, <laughs> just so you're aware. So here we are again. We've we've learned a little bit, just a little bit. Ha ha ha. And we're more experienced. And so we thought, let's give it another go for mom. And then we're like, oh, you know what? We should totally compare this with one of the commercially bought plum wines that we knew my mom liked. And so I remembered a particular one because the name I thought was amusing because I'm childish at heart. And when we were looking at it, we're like, this isn't even a plum wine. What is this? This is stupid. And so we saw some other ones. We're like, oh, this just must be commercial crap. We got to go to the Asian market and get the real deal. Well, I did some research. Plum wine isn't really plum wine. Plum wine really isn't plum wine at all. It's, it's often misunderstood and confused because of its naming versus what it actually is. In most cases, it's a neutral spirit that has plum added to it. Oh, it's not even a wine. In some cases, it's a, a white or red wine that has plum added to it. So there's many mm, different wow. variations on that, but it's not actually fermented plums. Well... Why? We made fermented plums. I don't know why, but it is a tra tradition that started in Japan, and they have uh, a specific varietal names for the different types that I'm not going to try to pronounce because I don't want to insult anybody. But basically, it's kind of like a, a, a sake rice, rice wine scenario where... Oh, okay. There's just a lot of different ways. Regional yeah. variations. Are you going to taste that? I'm sorry. I was trying to get the words out. <laughs> I think we need to do a gravity reading. I think it dried a little bit. It's a really interesting flavor. Very unique, very different. Ooh, I like that pucker. It's got a lot of um, good mouthfeel and astringency, but I do want to get another reading on it. Can, can you get, grab the uh, hydraulic? Yep. Okay, so part of the reason why I want to take another reading is it was at 1.030 two weeks in a row, okay? But it's been another week and something tells me we may have had a little bit more fermentation go on. Well, we didn't take a re or we did take a taste at that time, so we don't have. We anything. did taste it, and I remember it being a little sweeter than it is right now. Oh, we did, did taste you it. Did taste it? Yeah, I don't recall. Because I remember thing. this flavor, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like it literally is stopped at one point zero three zero. Now, is that because there's stuff in the concentrate that we use that's non-fermentable? Possibly. Don't really know. Um, it didn't seem like it should be, and usually they don't have those things, but it is certainly a possibility. Okay, 
So I know we're about to compare apples to oranges here, but I want to do it anyway just because of what our end target goal was, and that was to replicate a traditional plum wine, which turns out to not be a plum wine at all. So I did go ahead and purchase a, one of the commercially available plum wines in our area. And so this is imported plum fuki, I believe is how it's pronounced. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it is produced and bottled in Japan. And this is labeled as grape wine with plum and other natural flavors, an alcohol of 9%. So I don't know if we figured Ooh. out what our percentage is Let yet. me figure that out right now. 9%, yep. so we're not expected. So we started at 1.092, we ended at 1.030. That means we went to 0.062 times 135 gives us 8.37. It's oh, pretty comparable, right. I would say. So to my brain, that is pretty awesome because we can cheat right now and we can actually take a gravity reading on this to see what its sugar level is at nine percent okay you want me to just drop it right into the bottle or how am i doing just that? is that a thing that you can do in your fantastic pouring capabilities or do we need a funnel or what do we, what do we need here the trick is getting it back out oh i think i could do it Okay, all right. Nope. nope, displacement's a problem. <laughs> all right, so here's what we're gonna do. The theory of displacement. First, we're gonna pour the sample. First, we have a color discrepancy. Good golly, Miss Molly. That's disappointing, isn't it? I, I want it to be plum colored. Good golly, Miss Molly. Did sure. you really just say I that? I totally said that. Okay, that is actually floating. However, I can't read it. <laughs> Dark bottle. So let me get a flashlight here and see if I can see it. Oh yeah, there we go. I can see it now. Oh boy, you want to say you want to say your thing again? What did you just say? Good golly, Miss Molly. One point zero seven two. To say this is sweet is a bit of an understatement. <laughs> Now we knew that because we've had this before, yep. but I didn't realize it was that. Yeah, me either. That's. Do you want to write that down just for reference? I mean, we don't have to match that. That would be silly. So what's really interesting about that too is um, people like to criticize sweetness levels and things like that. Say, oh, that's disgustingly sweet. Here is a commercial product that is actually 1.072. That is almost the starting gravity that we use to make this, just so you're aware. But right off the bat, we have some differences, folks. I don't think they're anything close to the same. Ours smells like uh, a cherry, yeah. kind of dark fruit. I was getting cherry notes in the flavor. Yeah. Theirs smells like... Artificial? <laughs> it just does. Um, I don't hate it, because mm. I, I actually like plum wine, too. Uh, see, it smells like cherry cordial. Yeah, it smells very much like a fortified spirit rather than an actual wine with plum juice. Yep. Not yep. to say that's bad. Yep, yep. Just different. All right. So hey, gonna... this opens us up. We might have a new video to make. Can we make a real plum wine? What? You mean a real, not real? A real Japanese authentic style plum wine. How's that? <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense, right? We made a real plum wine, but can we make a Japanese style plum wine? The differences are shocking. Oh, this is nice, actually. But drinking that. It's like drinking. I, I understand now it's super why sweet. mom likes this. It's sugar water. Because her other favorite is Chambord, which is also very much a liqueur versus a wine. Okay, or... I have an idea. Well, okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but we can't help it because we're God scientific people. You saw this coming. Yeah, that's why. It's I about did. half and half. I didn't stop it. I can't stop it. Hmm. Okay. What this tells me is, if ours was made sweeter, I don't want to go quite as sweet as they did. Mm. I think we can make a better product. Mm -hmm. So that means we're gonna have to pasteurize, and that we kind of expected that. I know it's blasphemy, and I'm terribly sorry, but the two of these are better than. The, the sum is... Wait a minute. What is... 
Wait a minute. We could fortify. I was just going to say, do we want to just pour <laughs> that right into here? <laughs> well, well, why don't Are we... we likely to drink that on its own? You won't because it's probably not helpful for you. We have to refrigerate it. All right, this is, this is just going off the rails. Do you guys care? Does anybody really care if we dump this bottle of stuff that we're never gonna drink into here? Because what this does, this does two things. I was going to sweeten the plum wine that we made. Right. This will sweeten it. Yeah. It doesn't really fortify because they're roughly the same alcohol content. But, well, we'll, okay, we have to math now. Will we be able to bottle it after doing that rather than pasteurizing? I believe so. This is higher than this. That's a higher proof, mm -hmm. but it's only 9%. And what yeast did we use? Cote de Blanc? Yeah. Which is a 12 to 14% tolerance. But it's been stable at 1.030. Yes. And we're adding more alcohol. Oh, and that should be stable because it's commercially mm. made. But here's what we can do. We can put this back into a container and see if it ferments more before okay. we bottle. All right. How's that? Okay. Now, before anybody gets all crazy on me, I am going to take a couple of measurements here. So we're at 108 ounces right now. But yeah, the combination of those two is really lovely. And this should be 25.5. We only had a little bit out of this. So this is like 24 ounces. If you're wondering, no, this is not what we had planned for today at no, all. No, no. We were expecting to, you know, pasteurize this and be able to... I, I think this is more interesting. And I know a couple people will not like that we're mixing things and making cocktails and all that. Here's the thing about homebrew. If you were to make a wine and then add something to it afterwards, you're doing the same thing we are. We are just adding a finished wine to it that happens to be commercial. What if we made this sweeter plum wine and found it too sweet for us and this one was too dry we mix them together now we get something somewhere in the middle is there anything wrong with that i don't think so so the simple fact that we didn't make the second one really doesn't change all that much in my opinion i mean you know everybody can have their own uh way of doing it we did this mostly for fun just to see what'll happen you know and we're still on the chart so i can actually see where we're at here cool. and to make mom happy okay so we started with 108 ounces, which is right there. So that is 3,400 milliliters. And we're at 3,800 now. So we added 400 milliliters of the uh, plum wine. I could do crazy amounts of math, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's something like 8.5% or 8.6%. It's, it's in that range, okay? It doesn't really matter that much. The point is, how does it taste? I mixed it up a little bit. Let's give it a taste. It's still got a gorgeous, gorgeous color. I get a little bit of the sweet, the, the, uh, the aroma from the plum wine and still get ours too. Okay. What this did, it softened what we had going on. Mm -hmm. Ours had a lot of acid going in there. There's a lot of brightness in there. It took that down because I felt that theirs was just sweetness without a lot of anything else. There wasn't yeah. a lot of balance yeah. to it. It was just very, very sweet. Taking that overly sweet with the overly acidic, balanced them together and took our acidity level down to a tolerable level and brought up the sweetness level just enough to make it really nice. Ours had, and I mentioned that right as I took the initial sip, this really lovely bright sharpness to it. And it has retained that but now it has some of the sweetness, so it reads 100% as ripe, juicy fruit. Yeah. And that, to me... This is way better. ...is an elevation between the two products. Yeah, yeah. Each of them had a flaw. By combining them, we lessened those flaws and made them better. Now, I'm not saying that they make a bad product. No. It's, for our personal taste, that was way too sweet. But plum wine is a sweet thing. It just always is. What I do want to do, though... What I do want to do, yeah, is take a reading on this. I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere between our 1.030 and 1.072, probably closer to the 1.030. Based off of what I just tasted, I'm going to say it's probably about 1.038. Yes, I know. I put myself on camera saying stuff like that. It's okay to be wrong. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. No, it's, it's how you that recover. Was an educated guess that wasn't. Yeah. 
That's how science works. You, you. Oh no! I got it. One point zero three eight. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you are not. Okay, so it ended at one point zero three eight. I also kind of did the math in my head. I didn't do it off camera. I swear. It was, it was my, um, FG with all that mixed in. To me, this is great. And I think we can rack this to a, a fermenter, put it under airlock, leave it for like a week, see if it moves at all. If it doesn't, I think it's safe to bottle. Yeah. Because it's not necessarily something that needs to be pasteurized because it's already stable. You know what I mean? And then the commercial product is already stable. So we're adding a stable product to a stable product. Alcohol is slightly higher. So with more alcohol, even with more sugars, and it was already done, I don't think it's going anywhere. It could prove me wrong. That's why we put it under airlock for a week, just to be sure. So let's say you didn't want to add a commercial beverage to the plum wine once it was at the stage that we were at prior to doing that. If you wanted it to be sweeter, you could simply add a sweetener of your choice. Since we were going the wine route, I would suggest sugar. Any type of sugar that you prefer. White just, sugar's fine, raw cane sugar. If you want to use invert sugar, go for it. Just know that if you add something that has a flavor, such mm -hmm. as brown sugar, that is going to add yeah. that flavor to Even your beverage. Even demerara sugar. Yeah. And some, some raw cane sugars can have a little bit more molasses right. flavor right. too. So be Which careful. Which may be something that you want, yeah. maybe something that you don't want. Just keep it in mind. I don't know that too much would be good in this, but a little bit might not be a bad idea. Uh, beyond that, because you are adding a fermentable sugar, you're going to want to stabilize. Our preferred method is pasteurization. You can use whichever method that you prefer. Right. Um, also, if you don't want to pasteurize, you don't want to stabilize, but you do want to add sweetness, you have the option of adding a non-fermentable sugar, such as allulose or erythritol. We prefer allulose because it tends to be more of a sugar-like Yeah, comparison. we actually chose that thinking it was sugar in the test that we did. Right, where erythritol still has a, a great sweetness, but it does have a bit of an off flavor, at least it does to us. Yep. It may be different for Your you. Your mileage may vary. Exactly. Um, so those are the different routes you can take with this plum wine if you prefer not to use a commercial product to fortify it or to, in this case, we weren't actually intending to fortify it. We were no. just trying to add sweetness and complexity. So, so what are we going to do with this now? We're going to rack it we're and then it. we'll come back and do a final tasting once yep. this has sat for a while and yep. melded. Yep, yep, yep. I just wanted to give them the, the different oh, yeah. options that they had beyond what we did today because that uh, wasn't what we intended to do, but oh, yeah. it worked out. And that's the cool thing with homebrew. It is your brew. Do it however you like it. If you like it and you're not getting sick from it, no one else is getting sick from it, and you're not doing anything illegal, and you're not doing things that are dangerous, you're not doing anything wrong. You know, Don't let somebody tell you, oh, you have to do this in order to make mead. You have to do this in order to make wine. Those things just are usually not true, okay? There's a million different ways to do things. Pick what works best for you, and like I say, as long as you're not hurting anyone, no one's getting sick, and you're not doing anything illegal, how can you be wrong? And if somebody tells you that they don't like it that way, don't give them any more. It's your brew. Keep it for yourself. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this, and we'll be back with you when it's ready for its final taste. Okay, it's been sitting for a week with the actual plum wine into our plum wine. This is the combined mixture. We're gonna give it a final taste, <laughs> see how it is. This one went a little off the rails, but hey, you know, that's part of the fun of homebrew. You just, you go with it. And if we did the same thing in every video, wouldn't you guys be bored? I mean, you know, we'd rather mix it up a little bit, do different stuff, surprise you, surprise ourselves. And the chaos crew. Surprise Derica. <laughs> Alrighty, oops, spilled a little bit there. It's okay. Can you put that back in there? Please and thank you. Okay, so this is 1.038 gravity now with the other wine added, and it's something in the 8.4% range. So it's relatively low ABV, and it is, like I said, a mixture of that plum wine and our plum wine. It's a beautiful, really rich, yep. super dark, but you can still see through it. Oh, yeah, to it's the light. clear. It's totally clear. Yeah. It's just very, very dark. It's really dark. Um, gorgeous blood red. I smell the the commercial plum wine yeah. in there. I'm, and I think that's adding to the experience. I'm getting, me. the sensation I'm getting on the aroma is uh, chocolate covered cherries. Yes. Which is cordial like cherries. one of my favorite things in the world. I didn't know that. Yes, it is. 
I'm going to have to go get you some. Um, that's why my mommy gets them for me for every Christmas. Unless I say no candy this Christmas. Uh, but that's what I'm Oof. getting on the aroma. I, I get that. And I get like the deep, rich uh, smells of plums and, and stone fruits. Just it smells really, really My good. brain is saying chocolate because I'm going to the chocolate <laughs> coverage area realm. I can imagine the chocolate, but there's no chocolate <laughs> present. It's my brain. My brain works in mysterious ways. Okay. Um, wow. There's a lot going on there. It's got this very interesting, the, I can't even call it astringent. I don't know what it's it is. Tart. It's tart. There's a tartness mixed with sweetness. It kind of slaps you around a bit. Yeah. And you're not too insulted by it. No, this is nice. <laughs> oh, the comment section. But I'm getting all the dark richness of plum and dark fruits, like dark cherry, plum. But then there's that tartness there that keeps the sweetness down. Immediately, my brain goes, you want this chilled. Maybe. It might be better chilled. We drink, okay, we taste things at room temperature because that way it's a standard. Unless it's carbonated, then it's chilled because yeah, of science. Because that's what you do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, chilled, this might be a little bit better. When you chill something, it tends to take the flavors down. So in this case, I might take that tartness down a touch. We're not going to find out because I'm not going to go chill all this and then taste again. We're not, we're not doing that. Sorry. I don't mean to disappoint everybody. I like it. It's funny. It's making me do the alcohol face, but it's not because of the alcohol. It's the tartness. The tartness is Definitely. Just, it's, Can you hold on? It's just got gotcha. more. It grabs you and shakes you around. You need more too. <laughs> I apparently need more too. Try not to overfill her glass. She'll finish every drop. I will. Drop. It, it's a thing. Um, so this is interesting. I This is almost pushing it towards an experience beverage. I think it is an experience beverage. Rather than just your plain old humdrum. I see this as something that I would... It's either an aperitif or a digestif. This could be either one. It could be either or. Because it's got that tartness that opens your palate up for food. You could have it before, or you could have it as, and a, after. as a cleanser. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is unique, is what this is. It's yeah. very different. And when you said, "Oh, hey, let's just put the plum wine in our plum wine," I was kind of like, "Really? Mm, why? really? Yeah. I, I know. Mean, I come saw on. the face. I've reviewed the tapes. But now." I'm like, you oh, see the wisdom. In this is choice. like a whole new thing. Mm -hmm. This is not, mm -hmm. this is not your plum wine, super sweet. Oh, let me just drink this because it's candy. No, this is a, this is a whole new thing. Now remember the the Fuki wine is 1.072 gravity. We got this down to 1.038 by mixing things together. Yeah. Um, yeah, their their stuff is really really sweet. Crazy sweet. Yep. And that's just... I think it was too much. That's just what it is. With the with some of that mixed into what we had, I think it makes it nice. Because ours was very, very tart. Theirs was very, very sweet. So when you combine them, you get sweet tart. Yeah. And, and if you if you like the sweet tarts candy... Then this is great. This is great. And I happen to be a fan of those. So well, there you go. Okay, so we have to do two scores. We do two scores now. We do a performance score, which is how did the brew do? Did it do as expected? Did it have off flavors? Did it have any weirdness? Was there difficulties in the fermentation process? Did it do what we wanted it to do? And then our second score is our own personal enjoyment score, which is where we basically say, I like this or I don't, you know, that kind of thing. Were we able to figure out the ABV on this? Um, it's 8.4. Okay. Ish. Because I'm not getting alcohol. <laughs> no, there's this at all. very little alcohol. Like, I mean, I wouldn't say that. It's. It's like a very strong beer or a medium strong beer. But I think the tartness is so yeah. forefront. It's a little I'm bit below what I would even consider a wine, but just 0.6 points. It's not yeah. that far. Yeah. It's, it's pretty close. I would, it's, I a, think, it's a wine. I think the commercial wine category, I think it's It was still, the same. It was like 8.4 or 8.5. It's still 8 considered a wine. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. But when it comes to performance, that's what we have to look at. Did it do what we wanted it to do? How did it do? In this case, we had a stall. It stalled at 1.030. And then it was kind of strange and we had to add other stuff to it. So, you know, that tells you some stuff. Do you have a performance score? I have a performance score. All right. Are you ready? I am ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-
two, three, five point five. Yeah, I probably could go lower too because on its own it wasn't going to where we wanted it to go. But then, uh, and sort of researching before we started, we researched after we started to find out that what we were trying to make wasn't actually even a wine in the first place. Well, we made one. We totally made plum wine. We made plum wine. But to try to make the actual plum wine but isn't really a wine. That's not what plum wine yeah, it's is. It's a liqueur. So it's and it's okay. We made plum wine. <laughs> then we mixed it with plum wine. So we have plum wine. We, we got it. Should a, I did that? A whole, yeah, I saw that. Um... So yeah, I, I just knocked it down a little bit because even though we didn't get to where we were looking to get to, what we were looking to get to was an unattainable goal. Okay, I, I, I looked at it from a slightly different perspective. We used a plum concentrate that is made for doing what we did. It did not finish. It stalled at 1.030. We added Cote de Blanc yeast, which is a 12 to 14% tolerance. We had a 1.092 starting gravity. That's not high. We added Fermato. We didn't add anything else that would change this. I think it could have been an acidity thing because it was very acidic when it came sure. out. Sure. And we weren't checking pH yet at the time that right. we did this. So I'm right. betting you that was part of the issue. Yeah, probably. But it stalled at 1.030. We tried everything to get it to work again. It didn't, so we racked it. And then we had to add a commercial product to get it to be acceptable. Well, and that wasn't even our intent. Nope. Our intent was to compare the two, and right. then we're like, oh, well, there's your problem. I didn't like either of them alone. And that was the that was the thing. We tried it, and it did a thing, and now here it is. Yep. So, yeah. So to me, it's a five, this this a five was a five. learning experience on oh, God, yeah. a multitude of levels, yeah. and so I didn't really want to performance wise push it down because I I feel like if you're learning, you're winning. That well, just... yeah, there's that too. But from an actual fermentation standards perspective, this was kind of mm, not so much. It really it really sure. didn't do a great job. The, was... I think so far this has been my lowest performance grade. I believe so too. I have given thus far. So. Okay, and now um, I need another taste because, can you hold on? Yes. Because the next is the um, biased, how do we enjoy it? Do you like it or not? And you need a little bit more for that. There you go. Mouthful. I'm rationing her today. She tends to finish all the glasses of all the tastings. If he so, leaves some, I finish his glass yeah. for him too. It's, it's so trying to waste not want not. We have a lot of filming to do today. All right, my personal enjoyment, like when I look at that, I say everything from aroma to color to how does it taste to convenience of it. I think you're right. If it was chilled, it might be a little bit better. But I'm gonna score it as is because that way it's consistently scored against other things that are like it. All right, are you ready? Do you have a number? Yeah. One, two, three, seven. seven. I, I, consistency will set you free. I, I feel like I want to like this more. It's very tart. It's really tart. If it wasn't for that, I could have gone higher. Crystally tart. The thing is, I don't want to make it sweeter, no. and I don't want to add other things to it, because then it takes away from what it is, even though we already did that. There's a lot, there's a few things you can do, but it would change the character of what the beverage is. Sure. To me, this is still a plum wine, and I'd like it to stay a plum wine. I yes. don't have a problem with it. Yes. I, I gave it a seven. I mean, that's not bad. Oh, yeah. My yeah. reasons for not going higher are because of the tartness, and it's really not my thing. It's just not something that I would reach for very often, but I do like it kind of as a palate cleanser before yeah. eating. I, I think for that, it's actually really, really good. Yeah, I think I will still drink small this. Small amounts. But small amounts. Yeah, in small I'm, I'm doses. Not, I think this is really, really nice. I'm not gonna pour my double-sided uh, wine glass full of no. <laughs> this stuff. <laughs> so overall, not bad, but you see how the performance can be different than the experience. It could be the most horrific experience trying to get it to this point, but if the end result tastes good, which matters more, you know, and that's why we, that's why we started doing the two score thing 
because I think it actually, it, it matters because I'm all, I was torn on so many brews that we did. Do I average my ideas together? Do I go with one or the other? Which matters? Is it the final outcome? But then we're a teaching channel. We want people to understand the, the, how to get to here too. And was that a problem? So I think giving both, I, I know I keep rationalizing that, but I think it's a good idea. Sure. And my takeaway from this is th these this particular brand of concentrates, the more I research about people's experience with using them and how they suggest using them, seems a lot more complicated than what a concentrated- Well, their math doesn't work. Specific thing should be. Their math is just so weird. Not saying it's a bad product because obviously it works and we've used them on a couple other things and they worked fine. But I think just uh, further know what you're getting into. Yeah. Is necessary. Yeah. It's it's not for the casual beginner. Let's put it that way. Um, but anyway, we're gonna put this away for like what a year. We'll, we'll taste it another. We're year. gonna bottle it. If you are unfamiliar with our bottling practices, I'll put a, a link in the description below of our full bottling procedure. And other than that, we are good to go. And we'll see you in a year for a revised tasting or another tasting or however you want to say it. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.